Herzlich willkommen in der Wiener Bildungsakademie. Wir in der Wiener Bildungsakademie arbeiten verstärkt auch international. Wir sind seit einigen Jahren Partner im europäischen Netzwerk River Cities. Mitten in der Corona-Krise haben wir unsere Partnerinnen und Partner eingeladen, mit uns über die aktuelle Situation in der Corona-Krise allgemein, aber auch am Sektor der Kunst und Kultur gesprochen. Wie kann es weitergehen? Wie lebt die europäische Kulturszene? Dazu sind Partner aus vielen verschiedenen Ländern eingeladen. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of the Wiener Bildungsakademie, dear partners from River Cities and from Einbruch. Welcome to our discussion evening today. And I was really looking forward to it, to, to see you all again here on this platform. Uh, we are currently in very difficult times and especially in the cultural fields, it's very hard for, for, for the people. And it's therefore very important that we exchange our ideas. And thank you very much for participating tonight. And I'm sure it will be an, a very exciting uh, discussion. And now I can hand over to our moderator, Bernd. And Bernd, thank you very much for organizing this meeting and good luck for the discussion. Yes, hello, Markus, and thank you. We are here in the panel discussion, European culture during the Corona crisis. We are happy to have the complete board of the River Cities platform with us. Uh, the River Cities platform is a partnership between cultural, environmental and political initiatives which work in their cities to interact with and develop their rivers or waterfronts and as cultural spaces. And we have here uh, Ivona Price from Intercult Stockholm, Magda Zagremska Duda from Gdansk, Marta Moretti and Francesco Solayo from Vente di Cultura in Venice, Mart Martin Meyer uh, from the city of Ostend, and Liz Gardiner from Fable Beach. And before we start, I want I ask yourself to introduce yourself, and I want to start with Ivona Price as the president of River Cities. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, Bernd, on Square Wiener Bildung for the invitation. Uh, it's an honor to be here and to speak for the, for the European culture and also for our countries, of course. Uh, as uh, I represent Intercult, uh, which is an independent hub for international collaboration in Stockholm, Sweden, 
Uh, we've been working here since 96 as uh, initiator and facilitator of collaborative culture projects, networks, and the uh, development of uh, intercultural and international project competence. Uh, we are interested in European policy, uh, different areas of uh, uh, culture, but also migration, climate, post-industrial cultural heritage, urban regeneration and urban development. Uh, we have a Europe Direct Information Office. Uh, we also, last but not least, are members, council members of the River Cities Platform Foundation and coordinators of I Improve and Member of Water projects, which are represented here. Thank you. Thank you, Ivona. And Marta, can you continue, please? Marta or Magda? Uh, Marta. Marta from Poland. Okay. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome from Gdansk. I represent uh, the Baltic Sea Culture Center, uh, which is a cultural institution of Pomorskie Voivodeship. We organize uh, all kinds of uh, cultural and artistic activities, uh, music, literature, um, history, heritage, you name it. And we are based in two beautiful uh, buildings, uh, historical buildings, uh, Old Town Hall and St. John's Center. Uh, we are also very much involved in the international uh, cooperation. So um, our presence here today is thanks to our long term commitment, uh, among others, to the River Cities Network. Uh, we are all here, friends and colleagues, so I'm very happy I can be in such a nice company today and that's honorable. Thank you. Thank you, Marta. And Marta and Francesco, can you both um, introduce yourself and your organization, please? Francesco starts, okay. I think. <laughs> Francesco? Okay. Sorry, I was mistaken. Now, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Sorry, thank you. I'm Francesco Calzolaio, and with Marta Moretti, we represent Venti di Cultura, uh, both in the uh, board of uh, River Cities and in our town in Venice. Uh, we, Venti di Cultura is a cultural association um, of uh, from 12 years working on experience and the most how waters uh, uh, and culture might link and unify territories and communities. Uh, we have done researches all over the Mediterranean and with river cities all over Europe uh, on interpreting this uh, incredible link uh, between waters and water. We are very glad to participate to this um, round table. We think that the culture uh, is uh, on stake it's, uh, itself together with the communities during the coronavirus crisis. Uh, I will you. only. Oh. Oh, sorry, I will only. No, no, add please, please. One thing that uh, um, uh, I, I feel very much attached to River Cities. Uh, platform foundation uh, since I've been following uh, its development from the very beginning and uh, now with Venti di Cultura we are trying to keep the um, connection tight uh, in, in this uh, situation. Thank you uh, and Martin from Ostend can you introduce yourself please? Yes, I know. Um, my name is Martina Mere. I work in Ostend with the Cultural Directory, which is the, the cultural department, the, the library, heritage and leisure uh, as a whole. And um, the city of Ostend has been a member of River Cities now for 10 years. So we're very happy that we can cooperate in many interesting programs having to do with river banks, with waterfronts, and the, the bridge between audience and cultural audience and, and this um, maritime um, city, maritime heritage. 
And uh, as a city, we organize heritage days, we uh, organize exhibitions, concerts, but we also facilitate um, uh, the, the organize other organizations in our city who organize festivals, music festivals, theater festivals, and so on. So it's a, a very nice habitat to work and live in. Thank you. And including myself, this was now the board of the River Cities platform, and we have one represent of the River Cities Council, Liz Gardiner from Scotland. Liz, could you introduce yourself, please? Hello, and thanks very much indeed, Bern, for inviting me. Uh, my name's Liz Gardiner. Um, I'm a director of a, a small cultural organisation called Fable Vision. And um, we're very, very keen to be part of this dialogue, particularly just now as uh, Brexit um, is happening and Scotland is being removed from the European Union absolutely against our will. Uh, so it's, it's more and more important um, that we are members of the River Cities Network and that we are part of uh, projects that are happening across Europe. Uh, Fable Vision is a, is a charity, a, a cultural charity. We're interested in cultural planning, a culturally sensitive approach to planning and policy. Um, we have a, a, a trading arm called Fable Vision Studios, which is a social firm. And um, that's our business model, if you like. The, the, the trainees in the studios are developing contracts that uh, fund the charitable uh, cultural activities. Um, so I've been a member of uh, River Cities Network for about six years now, and we are uh, also the Scottish partner in the trans-European project called Memory of Water, which is exploring waterfronts, post-industrial waterfronts, um, and we are our shipbuilding heritage in Govan is um, is a very key factor in in that project. Okay, thank you. So now you know all of the people of our virtual panel. And before we start to talk about the aspects of the cultural aspects or the aspect of our organization, it's also interesting about the situation in your countries. And as we should have meet in some weeks in, in Venice and also the whole uh, situation in Europe started in Italy first. I want to ask uh, Marta and Francesco, can you describe the situation in Venice at the moment and what do you think about the actual situation in your hometown? Yes, uh, uh, can I start? So we Venice uh, has a lockdown since mid-March uh, and uh, so far um, the, the deadline is uh, May 4th to return to a normality that we don't even know what will uh, look like. Uh, so far we can exit only for very important uh, issues or uh, um, for work or for health or for shopping, but in a very restricted uh, area. We have all learned to smart working and uh, and also to approach the um, culture through uh, the web in a different way. Um, the situation from the health point of view is uh, under control so far, but it's been uh, quite tough in the area uh, around Venice, uh, but mostly in Italy, the, the worst situation is uh, in uh, Lombardia, so the area around Milan. Uh, the city, as you have experimented so far, uh, doesn't exist any longer. So what you can see from the windows is um, an empty space, uh, or, or I would prefer to use the expression a naked city, because uh, it uh, um, is not my definition, but I, I found it very um, interesting because uh, it gives less a sense of emptiness, but uh, 
it shows the city in her um, in its structure architect from the architectural point of view and uh, and uh, the, like the layout of the city comes out more. Uh, but of course, uh, this uh, is a situation that cannot last forever. Already the economy um, in a country already uh, quite hit by the um, long economic crisis. Uh, it is, we are quite scared about what will be next. And I don't know if Francesco wants to add something. No, no, I think that you explained everything very well. Thank you. Okay, then. Um, a country which is very similar to Austria is Belgium, and uh, you have a similar inhabitants, but I think the situation in numbers is a bit worse uh, in Belgium than in Austria. Martin, can you explain how is the situation in Ostend and Belgium? Yes, well, in Belgium, we unfortunately have lost more than 4,500 people as today. The situation in the healthcare homes and is, the, is, this, is a disaster. Our hospitals can cope. We don't have the situations like in Italy, in Lombardia, or in Spain, where people are in the corridors. That's under control, but the situation is very bad. We are in a semi-lockdown. That is to say, we can leave the house to go uh, for shopping, to go to the apothecary, to go pharmacist, to go to the doctor, but also to go for a stroll or to go for a bike ride, which is actually... Uh, inspired by keeping people healthy, by giving them enough um, physical um, exercise to do. The situation is now lasting until the 3rd of May, and then we will know what will uh, gradually be loosened. It will perhaps be first the primary schools and then some shops, but the situation will not be normal uh, until the end of August. All festivals have been cancelled until the end of August for the whole of Belgium. So we will have a very quiet summer and it's not good if you are active in the cultural department. Maybe I can add here because the situation I think in Austria is here quite similar. We are allowed to go out. Um, supermarkets and pharmacies and so are open and small shops are open, uh, opened on Thursday after, after Easter now. But we will see how this, this goes. Uh, all events are forbidden till June. So there will be no big events or no seminars for us in June. The Danube Island Festival, which all of you know, um, will be in September, hopefully. So th we are not also not in complete lockdown, but all people who can work at home office should work in home office. Next, I want to ask Magda, how is the situation in Poland and how do you deal in, in Danzig with the Corona situation? Uh, well, uh, I think that uh, for the moment we are, uh, as far as the restrictions are concerned, we are in a very uh, similar situation almost to Italy, uh, because we are not allowed for recreational outings uh, and uh, <coughs> the, the parks and the forests are closed down. Um, those people who can uh, should, tr should work from, from their homes. And of course, schools and kindergartens are closed. Uh, there are special restrictions on shopping. Uh, people are obliged to wear masks when they are outside. So, but uh, there are some signs that uh, from Sunday, perhaps there will be some lessening uh, of uh, restrictions. So fortunately, and finally, we hope to be <laughs> to be allowed to go into the green areas because this is what we miss most at the moment. Um, well, in, in Gdańsk, we are keeping uh, well. Fortunately, um, it seems uh, our region, Pomorski region, is uh, the one uh, with the smallest number, lowest number of ca casualties and also those infected. Uh, so we are happy, but um, well, of course, it, there are discussions whether it depends on the number of tests uh, made. <laughs> That's why perhaps the number is so low of the of the people ill. Uh, but we yes, we are in good spirits, and uh, we are looking forward to 
to lessening of the restrictions and we hope yeah, we hope for the best, although we realize that this will be uh, this will be a very long, long struggle ahead. Thank you. And next, I want to ask Liz, how is the situation in Scotland? Um, yes, we are in complete lockdown in, in the UK. We're allowed out for essentials, as described earlier, uh, and for um, uh, a half an hour of, of uh exercise in the day, uh, but any um, interaction with other people without out with our own households um, is, is, is not allowed. Um, we've just heard about 10 minutes ago that um, our government uh, has uh, extended the lockdown for another three weeks, so it will be well into May before we have any uh, lessening of those restrictions. Um, there is a feeling, there's about um, a thousand deaths in, in Scotland um, and that includes um, people in care homes, uh, but it's mainly people in hospitals, um, but it does include the people in care homes and, and community. Um, that compares with um, over 10,000 deaths in, in England um, and we're hearing that um, the care home deaths have not been included in those figures. So. Um, the situation in England is is very bad, particularly in, in London, uh, where I have a lot of family, and it's very, very worrying. Um, the, the cultural scene obviously is is completely cancelled um, over the summer months now. Uh, we don't know when uh, things will start to to reemerge, um, but uh, we're um, keeping ourselves. Um, busy with uh, developing new ideas and projects, as creative people do. <laughs> and I, want, I want to end this round with Ivona from Stockholm, because Sweden has the, the, uh, a very different approach to most of European countries. Um, Ivona, can you describe how is the situation in Stockholm and how do you think about it com in comparison to all the stories you had now? Yeah, uh, so generally Sweden sets its own course uh, in battling the COVID-19 pandemic and refuses to lock down and introduce the strict measures, the strict regulations used in other countries. I hear that Austin or Belgium is also and Austria uh, on the very similar course. Uh, in Sweden, the, the, the primary schools and kindergartens are still open. Uh, people are recommended to work from homes, uh, but it's not a must. Um, restaurants, cafes, uh, clubs are opened. Uh, gatherings over 50 uh, are not allowed. So, I mean, everything under 50 is allowed. Uh, but uh, the, 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 the places outside, uh, like cafes, restaurants, they, they, they close anyway because they don't have customers. People are exercising in parks and forests. Uh, uh, well, the distance is needed, but not the masks. So we don't use masks. The masks are needed mainly for the healthcare. Um, you, we should stay at home when we are sick. Public transportation, uh, they are running commercials saying that uh, uh, if you don't want, uh, if you don't need to travel, don't do it if it's not absolutely necessary. Uh, so the difference is possibly that uh, the conversation in Sweden and why Sweden has this course uh, is that uh, the uh, struggle against it here is based on a trust uh, of citizens to the state and to each other. Uh, so uh, we people are generally glad uh, that the government trusts us as citizens and uh, treat us as adults and not criminals uh, to find each time we want to take a walk. Uh, the strategy is led not by politicians, but by an expert institution, the public health agency, which is trusted by 70% of people. Uh, so it's a really big uh, yes for this strategy. Uh, and when they come with a recommendation, it's not like uh, you have to, but you should to, to obey. So we are obeying. Uh, well, um, why the schools and the kindergartens are opened? It's because of, because of the workforce. Uh, 
uh, if they uh, will close, 30% of the workforce at the healthcare sector and the industry will be gone. So this is the securing of, uh, of the structure of the society. Uh, but it's definitely not business as usual. Stockholm is not the same. It's a springtime. Usually we, we are outside longing for the sun, but it's quite empty on the streets now. Uh, and the data, the, I mean, people get affected, get sick, and the numbers, uh, they are not, not uh, good at all. Uh, and also, uh, what is going in the cultural sector is a disaster uh, compared to, I mean, it's not a comparison, it's a disaster all over Europe. Yeah, and uh, you can even say that uh, in some, some parts of the cultural sector, right, like the freelancers, uh, it's a slaughter. Uh, so pe people are, uh, uh, well, uh, put outside of the social security structure of the society, like sick leave, like unemployment benefits, like childcare benefits, because they are not employed. And uh, the, the social security system is based uh, basically on, on, on employment. So I can talk more about it, but I guess mm -hmm. that we will continue with all yep. other countries and the situation, yes? Mm. Yeah, this would be my next point. Maybe Ivona, you can just just follow. How do you and your organization deal with the crisis? Do you have maybe new formats or ideas how you what what events you can do maybe online or what maybe you make an event under 50 persons or what are your ideas to deal with it? Uh, we are not doing events uh, under 50 either. We tried from the beginning, but now uh, the recommendation is not to gather the recommendation, so we obey it and we, uh, we, we don't gather. Uh, so the culture scene is more or less cancelled, uh, well, the events uh, were in, the, in, the, in the form, in the shape we know them. Uh, what is uh, happening here and uh, and also all over Europe as we can we can uh, see is that the culture scene is moving to a digital world uh, which is uh, of course a big big challenge it's not obvious at all to move to the digital world I mean we can have a discussions like this but uh, to make an event or a workshop it's totally new for us we don't have uh, we don't have the the, the um, uh, tools, uh, we don't know the tools, uh, we don't uh, have the strategy how to reach our ad audiences in the digital way. So this is really uh, a challenge, uh, even if everybody is trying to move to the digital world. And concerning our organization, leading uh, Creative Europe Erasmus programs, uh, and, but even regional activities in Stockholm, um, everything is cancelled or postponed to the undefined future. We started to block dates during the autumn, but you know that the corona can come back, so it's, <laughs> it's hardly possible. Uh, we are doing attempts to transform both European and local activities to the digital world, but it's not obvious, as I said. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we are, try we are doing our best, and I hope that, uh, that uh, we can also help others in this transition. Um, Martin, we saw some pictures of your library or other things you do with your organizations. How do you deal with this situation and, and is the library closed? We are, all River Cities partners have visited it at least once. Well, the library had to close down. Also, our uh, swimming pool, all sports facilities, all cultural venues had to, had to close. But the library has a, a special program. It's a, we call it Go and Collect, of Collect and Go. And you can order 20 books and uh, the library staff will place them in a bag and you can pick up this bag. So we have 200,000 books, but the library is half empty because so many packages were uh, collected by, by people of the city challenge to get all this material back and to disinfect it because it can be infected with coronavirus so that's the next challenge for the library but we have to call them back because we don't have book, uh, enough books anymore to please all our um, all our readers and for the cultural department we have emphasized our um, digital heritage heritage trails 
we have with uh, the museum, we have put focus on uh, work of art and have um, commented on it on Facebook. You can follow it with Muse in Ostend, which uh, every day there is somebody commenting on a work of art. And so we try to, to, to give some digital content to the cultural world, but it's very, very difficult. We had to postpone lots of things, our, our own um, events and uh, support to the others. So I expect that we will have a huge job in, in September to really um, get people back to culture, to not to lose mm. our audiences. And that's a huge challenge. And we are preparing this right now. We, do our, we are preparing actions in September to put, get back our audiences and to, to get them back also to other organizations because that's the job of the city to do. Yeah? And we are saving money because we don't have certain events, but we will put it in September in, in this new events, is uh, audience development uh, mm -hmm. actions, actually. Um, and Liz, you said before, uh, you have to be creative. What what do you think what can be done at the moment or is this also like a crisis is i mean it's a, a sentence we here say now a lot the crisis is also a time for opportunities is this an opportunity to be creative yeah absolutely i mean we, we we're not so much concerned with, with with audiences as as martinez we're more concerned with our cultural infrastructure and i think um being very aware of how terribly, terribly fragile it is uh, from the uh, individual artists who lost all their commissions and contracts overnight. Um, there was a, a fund to support them, which was only opened a few days and it was so overwhelmed that it closed again. Um, the, ch the third sector organisations like Fable Vision, um, Again, the studios lost every single contract immediately dead, either postponed or cancelled. Or the, So there's absolutely no money coming in, but still the rent to pay, still all the overheads. Um, so uh, a, 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 a fund for um, the third sector is opened by our government, which is, again, it was only open for uh, a few weeks and then it was so overwhelmed it was closed and and. So there's nothing specific for culture. There's no new money coming in from our government for culture. Um, so all of us are are are, are very creative. We're, we're 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 thinking of new ways to to approach this crisis. And it really is. I think Ivona used the word slaughter. Um, that's exactly how it feels. It feels like slaughter of of everything that we've built up. Um, but we've been starting to, to first of all, support our own um, volunteers and, and vulnerable users through the, the studios have long term unemployed people, people with long term conditions who are uh, working on the project. So we've developed online strategies to support them, to reach out to them, to, to make sure that they have um, projects that they can engage with and, and creative use of their time. Um, and that's been that's been working well, and we're actually beginning to realise actually we can reach many more people through that method than actually having to always bring them into the centre, the hub. Mm. Um, so so that's something that can be developed and can be rolled out and can be really um, practised as as part brought into the practice as part of what what we do. We can see that really clearly, um, and also other third sector organisations who are basically the clients of Fable Vision Studios because they commission the studios to do, to make films celebrating their work or to, to, to make websites for them. Or So we can offer those services um, for free at the moment because we have people who are able to contribute and nothing to do. So we can actually offer those services for free, mm -hmm. hopefully keeping the whole sector alive so that there are clients there when we come through the other side uh, for Fable Vision Studios. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's a it's a it's a creative strategy that we've that we've developed. Whether it will work or not, we'll see. Amen. Oh, thank you, Liz. So uh, a year ago. 
I visited uh, Gdansk in in the I Improve project, and we also visited the, the Baltic Sea um, Center. So, Mark, how is is the center open? Can you what what can you do or what have you done in the last three weeks? Is there any chance for you to make your a normal work. Magda, are you here? Um, we can't hear you. Hmm. Maybe you, okay, then we, we continue. Or oh, maybe she's not here anymore. So then maybe the, our last partner for this question, Marta and Francesco, what we saw in the first uh, weeks of the Corona crisis were a lot of videos of Italians singing from the balconies or doing creative um, um, things outside. Do you think, what can you yes. do with, with Ventiti Cultura or what can be done in, the, in this way of, of creativity? Yes, I mean, um, we have to uh, start from uh, understanding that uh, the crisis for Italy is not a new thing. Uh, all the Mediterranean countries, uh, like Greece, as everybody knows, but also uh, Italy, were very much affected by the crisis of the end of the first decades of the 2000s. Uh, you know, uh, we were, we are now, we were now going out after these 10 years of crisis. So from one side, this is an opportunity because we are used to face uh, 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 our strategies in terms of poverty, uh, little means and the maximum uh, audience development starting with uh, the less. So, uh, especially in the Cultura, um, we, 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 we were born in 2006 uh, and I remember there were a golden age in comparison with the, the recent years uh, because uh, in 2007-2008 we have done projects um, with several institutions in all, all around Italy and we were raising from this institution uh, between 10,000 and 50,000 euro from each to doing uh, events, a sequence of events along the waterfront, you know, like we do. Documentary, uh, uh, water experience and so on, and, and conferences. For doing the same, last year in the market, we raised from uh, six, seven different cultural institutions to one, 200 euro to the other 400 the region gave us 1,000. So it's, you can see, it's uh, less than 10% of that. And so, well, of course, we are uh, resilient by definition. So we already developed all the possible strategies to face the crisis. Uh, not this, of course, because it's much deeper. It's just the beginning because uh, we have to be, we have to, to know that after the health crisis, we will have an economical one, much bigger, that we are, it's announced in these weeks. And then that will, uh, above all, there is the ecological crisis. You know, we, we cannot ignore that the first two uh, regions hit by the coronavirus were the most polluted, where the air was the most polluted in the world, like Pianura, Padana and China. Uh, the Penura Padana, the, you know, the Four River Flatland, is the more polluted area in Europe. And it's not by chance that the virus affecting lemons uh, and the respiration system uh, is so deadly, so heavy um, attacking the population there because they were already facing uh, trouble. Uh, so, uh, in terms of that, uh, mm, uh, in general, the cultural uh, institution in Italy uh, will, uh, will suffer a lot. No? Really, the best, uh, the more resilient will survive to the crisis. But, uh, what, but we are not on stake, the cultural institution. Is on stake the role of culture in the future of our cities, in the future of our communities and territories. 
So this is what uh, this is the reason because we are here. This is uh, what we are discussing together. And but we think that in order to face that, we will discuss further that we have really to change strategy uh, further on once again. Thank you, Marta. Want, do you want to add something? No, I just, just want to talk uh, to add something about not really venti di cultura, but what has been happening in the city in these weeks. Uh, Liz was talking about creativity and in fact it was quite surprising the way people try to uh, organize themselves in a different uh, uh, scale. So from the cultural point of view most of the museums and, uh, and uh, cultural institutions propose uh, uh, guided tours, entertainment uh, and uh, debates. Uh, an, um, uh, an enormous quantity of offer uh, that you could stay sit uh, in front of the computer like uh, uh, 24 hours a day and uh, this of course is a way to keep uh, the interest alive to keep uh, your audience connected but also to open up uh, to a different uh, audience uh, that um, will have to be um, uh, the challenge is to, to for the future is to see how this new audience can be also profitable from the point of the economic point of view and uh, for, for example the la, uh, la, la fenice the theater is uh, totally closed uh, since the the beginning uh, and it leaves a lot out of the tourists that are um, mu music lover, opera lovers, and uh, they have built in this uh, uh, recent years uh, um, an offer that uh, um, gives uh, one evening uh, an opera and the second evening a different one in order to give to the visitors the possibility to go several times uh, during their stay. And uh, so they, they, they live uh, with the public contribution, but also with uh, uh, the tickets of, uh, but they are uh, in the meanwhile, they're offering uh, uh, talks and interviews. And uh, so it, it's um, a whole new world that is uh, coming up uh, now uh, for culture. And uh, it's an interesting uh, challenge. Okay, uh, Magda, are you here now? Because we haven't. Yes, uh, yes. I had okay. some. Uh, I had some. Sorry, I had some problems with unmuting myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, so yes, uh, yes, we are also remembering this. Uh, remember this uh, visit of yours last uh, year. It was. Uh, I think it was a good one. <laughs> so we have good memories. Here, um, as far for our uh, yeah for, for the Baltic Sea Culture Center, our buildings are closed for the public for the audiences, so they they are empty. They are not filled with music or people's talks as usually. Uh, but our team, our team, is busy working together. We all work uh, from home. Some of us come on duty hours to the office. And we have moved a lot of uh, our events to the to the digital space. Of course, it means that we have to we are improving all the time our skills <laughs> in uh, digital um, uh, developed products, cultural products. Uh, but this is, I, I think, this is a, a good uh, a good aspect, as uh, Lise mentioned and others, that uh, we are actually um, in a very speedy way acquiring uh, new competences, and also um, having a, a bit more time because we don't lose so much time on travel, for example, to work on commuting on work. We can also visit other cultural institutions uh, in Europe and in the world. So I think it's uh, very inspiring. It's a very inspiring act. Uh, of course, because uh, so many people move their activities, uh, I mean, cultural organizations and artists move their activities uh, to the Internet. There is uh, quite a lot of, uh, I would call it a cultural traffic jam. 
so uh, perhaps too much to choose. So this is something that we really have to learn as well, perhaps for the future, how to organize this cultural content so that we uh, do not overlap with other uh, initiatives um, because this, everything is so interesting. And um, and and because I come from Gdańsk, I am talking to you from Gdańsk. Of course, the word uh, which is always important to remember and uh, to put into practice is solidarity. And I think uh, uh, this is what we want to do both uh, towards the independent artists um, who are in a very difficult situation but also expressing our gratitude to to the the workers of health service and other services uh, which are very helpful and also uh, expressing this solidarity i think this uh, this meeting today uh, is also an act uh, of uh, our uh, cultural solidarity that we people of culture connect and uh, support each other um, if uh, for the moment mentally but also i hope uh, in any other possible way. So yeah, yeah this is how it looks like. So now we we know about the situations in each country and Ivona, I want to ask you because you invented or you you started with us the project I Improve, which is a project to learn and to improve ourselves. Is there something even positive in this crisis? I mean, what what can be beside all all the problems and uh, we have? But do you think there is something positive in this, or what can we learn from this time? Yeah, I, uh, the I improve uh, project uh, deals with the change making, change making of uh, our organizations and of the people around us and. Uh, uh, we focused during the last two years on uh, well positive changes uh, which can be introduced in 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 our our uh, work uh, together with our with the, the world around us people around us our communities and now this word change making uh, got a new meaning uh, Previously, we were working. We are looking at the uh, at the methodology which was around us, the digital tools which were around us, and and looking for possibilities to to change somehow to adapt. But now we must adapt to a totally new situations, which we never have. We have never been exposed to that kind of of crisis, that kind of challenge, uh, and adapting to that kind of challenge is is really. I don't know if we, it's both negative and positive because the crisis is, is of course negative, but but uh, to uh, being forced to to change the war, the way we uh, work to, to 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 change the approach to the society around us to realize the fragile fragi how fragile the system of of our society is, including the culture organizations and freelance and, and artists, the, the whole culture system is very, it's a very fragile ecosystem. And I think that we all are realizing this uh, through the crisis. So what will wait on the other side, uh, nobody knows, but uh, for sure, uh, we, this is a lesson for everybody um, uh, how to sustain our presence as organization, as culture. How do culture sustain the presence on the map of Sweden and Europe? How do we stay alive? This is the change making uh, of this time. Oh. The coronavirus is the, the big change maker for us all. Yes. Uh, before we finish this uh, this discussion, I also because we have here about 30 people, and if you have any questions or want to say something, you can also use the chat, write your name and the organization, and then we will ask you to to join the discussion. But I, I have to say that we are live on Facebook, so if you don't want to show show your face, please turn off the camera. So. If there are questions from the audience, you can can ask um, from now on. And, uh, and what what we heard here also of changes or positive things, and I want to come back to Venice, is that 
and they, are, they, they said they are dolphins back in the harbor of, of Venice. And so this is maybe the, the fun thing to start this question. The first of all, is this true? Have you seen any dolphins from your balcony, Marta, or no. is this just a, a, a story? But what do you think, what can we learn from this situation? Is there any positive thing for you? No, for sure. It's, uh, but, um, I think that the most um, important thing that we can learn is that uh, we are, as Ivona was saying, we are fragile, but also flexible and adaptable. And this is, uh, I personally, the first week of lockdown, I was driving crazy, but then you, uh, like you ad adjust yourself to a new dimension. And uh, so to slow down and to give importance to different things that you maybe didn't notice uh, running uh, uh, around. Uh, also solidarity that it came out uh, uh, more um, uh, stronger in this situation or people are more willing to look at each other in a different way. But I, I don't know uh, if this uh, this is the, um, the the things that we are learning now during the emergency. The the, the 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 doubt that I have is what we will learn on the long run. Because I really hope that some of the things that we are experiencing now, and it's maybe really the first they compare like uh, uh, this situation of the. COVID-19 to a war, but uh, from the sofa of, of your of our home. So it's a war fighting in a different uh, way, if you want in a comfortable way for who is obliged to stay at home. But uh, it's probably the only experience that we are um, sharing the entire world at the same time uh, in the same uh, uh, difficult situation. So probably each country then will reply and will react in a different way because we we are living, we have different resources. But it's an interesting uh, um, uh, stop. Uh, is a, a, an interesting uh, situation. I, I don't know if it's. Uh, um, I think that we we will have to see what in a longer term what will uh, last uh, for sure you were mentioned in uh, the environment uh, the environment is certainly taking advantages uh, and i hope that this will be uh, um, something that we can could keep keep uh, in mind for uh, after what after will mean is an easy link uh, on, uh, on uh, streaming uh, a, a video with dolphins uh, pretending to be shot a uh, few days ago. But it's not. What were two years ago so in Palestrina, an island uh, quite inside the lagoon, quite close to Venice. Uh, dolphins going, a family of dolphins going inside there. So the lagoon is a natural environment, it's rich, it's, it's, it's uh, alive, it's, uh, uh, it was, it is, and it will be. Uh, the problem is the conflict between, you know, the, the pollution and other things with the, uh, ma mainly with the human capability of, of staying, because the, the, the most conflict is between the people living in town and the master. This is uh, eroding the capability of the city to maintain itself, is going in the direction of uh, uh, implementing a thematic park, it is the contrary of a living community. So this is the risk. If we, uh, after the coronavirus, uh, we will uh, leave everything uh, like it is, the community is very, it's much weaker, as Marta was saying, and uh, the potentiality of the risk, we have to enhance the, the resiliency more than ever. 
But we have some enemies that are not of Betty culture, of course, not of the cultural uh, institution, middle institution, like in culture in Venice, not the, the cultural institution in Venice. But it's a global problem. Um, two years ago, Biancos, the president of the European uh, community, in the opening uh, uh, speech of the parliament, uh, didn't mention the word culture. This is noticed and contested by the president of Europa Nostra in a public uh, uh, lecture to him. Uh, this is the problem. That year was the year of Europe of culture. So really, culture has a very little meaning in our strategy. Do anybody speak about culture in this new discussion about uh, European founding? No. The government of Italy has done a task force in order to define uh, two days ago, in order to define the strategy of phase two and phase three. There is no one representative of culture, of the world of culture, of the world of architecture, university, no one. So uh, we all together, locally and globally, have to fight to give a, a rule of culture, because it's, it's never like now important that we do this. But we have to ask the others to pay attention to us, but also we have to change ourselves. What we think, we, we are discussing this with our friends of Anticultura and, uh, and in Italy, and some of them are here uh, listening to us. Um, we think that we have to hybridate, we have to change our vision once again, but more radically, because what, what we risk is to be irrelevant not only during the coronavirus crisis, but after. We, we need to change our vision. We need to stress wider problems, wide struggle, wider issues, like we are already doing, of course, uh, with the community of river cities, stressing the issue of uh, um, climate change, you know, working on strategies that will make the cities more resilient toward climate, to, to, to resist to, to the issues, to the struggle of climate change. Positioning culture like a, a web, you know, like a network, uh, helping the many institutions to cooperate. And we have some idea, we are developing some idea very much site-specific as we can do, like the uh, mission, like the uh, Cultura, uh, but uh, we are we can say we are doing very well. We don't know we will have time to discuss about a singular option. But at the same time, we have to work on the notion of community, going out of the immediate task of uh, the cultural institution, representing some branch of culture, but being ready to serve the community as the community needs. And for example, and these needs are different in the side by side, but for example, the Venetian community needs to be represented, needs to, to build a link with his public spaces, because these public spaces are now eroding, eroding the, the quotidian life experience of the Venetian, that was the one who built them, uh, eroded by the mass tourism, now by the absence of movement, because, you know, Venice is much beautiful, as beautiful as silent, and not accessible to Venetian. Mm. And their huge risk is that the reverse will be as it was in the past, as it will be in, in the future of, of uh, not, uh, not managed uh, mass tourists, not accessible to the Venetian, as are not for us. We have different speed, different rhythm the, uh, than the, the tourists, and this conflict is uh, we are the loser. We risk to be the loser. We have to take advantage of this crisis to uh, find a new strategy. And we are working on that, uh, trying to uh, uh, propose some uh, way to invade, to appropriate some campus, some campus, campus is the Venetian name for square. And, uh, and this, but not last, we have to uh, bridge our experience with the experience of the artisans. The Venice was built, of course. It is a common strategy for culture in Europe, but uh, for sure Venice was built, but an incredible sequence of people 
with incredible knowledges. Where are they? They are still there. They are resilient. They are. We have rope, rope maker, uh, uh, masons. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know the English terms uh, of these many uh, workers, but they are amazing. They are unique. Not speaking about uh, the glass makers. Not speaking about the imperialese. No, that is one uh, uh, way to manage uh, little glass pearls uh, and to make them uh, being a piece of art. We have to work with them, we have to learn from them uh, and help them with us to find a, a room in the possible future of our cities. Okay, thank you. Um, Francesco, you also said we have to act uh, locally and globally. Magda told about uh, the solidarity. M most of us from the panel, we know each other for more than 10 years and we see ourselves as a European project. But maybe a question, the last question for the panel, do you at the moment feel some somehow a European solidarity? Because in Austria, in the first week, our leader said, okay, we are now the team Austria, shop locally. The, the, the song they sung in from the balconies where I am from Austria, where they sing how beautiful and how strong the country is. They haven't sung any European song. There were no European yeah. atmosphere. It was Austrian based. So how is this in your country? So, is this maybe a, a backlash of nationalism in, in most of your countries or is there any, do you feel a European solidarity in the cultural scene and maybe in the, in the normal society? Who do you want to speak first, Ben? Please. Me? Can yeah, I go? Please. Yeah? yeah, please. please. Uh, but, well, Scotland, I mean, the, the, it, it's very, very uh, dear to our hearts that the idea of European solidarity is absolutely paramount for us at the moment here in Scotland. Um, our, our MEP, uh, Alan Smith, in his uh, last speech in the Scottish Parliament, uh, begged uh, Europe to leave a light on for Scotland, leave a light on for Scotland so that when we're independent, we can rejoin very, very quickly um, and resume our place as uh, part of Europe in the heart of Europe. We have always seen ourselves as European citizens and having our European citizenship taken away from us um, against our will is um, it, it's, it's, it's untenable for us. Um, we didn't vote for it um, by a huge majority. Uh, we wanted to stay in Europe. So that's absolutely our, our commitment to solidarity, to remaining part of this community. Um, and these projects are absolutely vital. These networks are absolutely vital for us to help us to, to retain that solidarity and, and that dialogue. Um, and in terms of uh, Europe going forward after all this is over, we are creatives. We are uh, creative people. We have the toolkits, if you like. We have the tools to uh, generate new conversations, generate new visions, engage with citizens and communities and help them to generate new futures. Uh, we are absolutely fundamental to whatever happens next um, and we need to take our place in that uh, and, and step into those roles powerfully. Thank you. So any, someone else from the panel who wants to, to answer about the solidarity? The European well, solidarity. I, 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 I think Please. Uh, the, the, the European, uh, Francesca was speaking about Europe and uh, how Europe uh, reacts, or European Commission, um, strictly speaking. And if you remember, uh, the culture is the, the, the responsibility of, of the nations, uh, not, not the, the responsibility of the European Union. So there are no measures actually for culture from the European Union just now. And all measures, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the support measures for culture are, in, are introduced uh, on the national level. So they are like governmental measures, regional measures, communal measures, uh, municipality measures, but not much of the European ones. And uh, we really, uh, we people working with international uh, relations, intercultural relations like us, 
in the in the international projects we uh, really feel a lack of those measures because working internationally needs a special support uh, and that's what Europe usually gives us in collaboration with the national measures, of course, but mainly on the European level. Uh, because the bridge, in my opinion, the bridge between uh, the nations and, and between, between the nations of Europe uh, is us. The, this, is, this is the bridge, the international collaborations, the projects which we are applying for, which we are sweating for, uh, which we look for funding for, uh, and which we implement with a great dose of effort, because this really costs time and money. And I think that the results which we see for the, for the uh, collaborations in networks, in projects, is uh, uh, supporting the international solidarity. Otherwise, we would not be here, right? Uh, I mean, we are gathered and also other teams are often gathered in the same way. I'm having meetings with our international collaborators every day, which we also you also have. So we are not losing the contact. Uh, in, on the contrary, we are supporting this contract, the, those contract, those contacts uh, on the European level. And I am so glad for having you and for having a possibility to continue those collaborations because I also think that uh, I, I believe that uh, our creativity in the international sphere uh, will support our survival, the survival of the cultural sector because we don't, don't only rely on the national measures which are not big and they are coming late and, and they will not be enough for everybody. So, so Europe and this collaboration can add uh, some supportive measures to our survival in the future. And also, this is a recovery. So having you around is, is a recovery measure because we can create other collaborations for the future and sustain. Okay, thank you, Magda. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, I can only uh, heartily, from all of my deep, from my heart, uh, support what Ivana said. Uh, we are the culture. We are the Europe. So through uh, the culture, uh, the connections are made through individual people, through individual relations uh, that together, together uh, make up uh, a, a big project. Uh, we even had uh, this project, which was called Shared History, how individual uh, pieces of thread make up uh, a, a big picture, so to speak, woven into a shared history. So we all share this situation. We share this and uh, think about uh, this, uh, this, this dramatic situation. This lockdown also showed how important culture is and how important European culture is. I mean, uh, what people would do at homes. I mean, they, they all immerse in culture and this is international culture. This is not our, just our international culture. No, no, we, we are able now to, to travel virtually to other countries to, to listen to, to music. So culture is really be behind borders, across borders. So this is really important. And uh, in a very symbolic way, and I think this is a hope for all of us. Um, yesterday, I received a snapshot of tulip blooming. Tulips in the garden, in the shipyard, in our, which were planted last year in October, together with, uh, it was uh, Tara, Tara Beals uh, from Scotland um, project. I know that Tara is watching us. Thank you. I mean, it's so moving, Tara, that those tulips are blooming now. So this is like, you know, the, the proof that, uh, that our projects are alive but, uh, and they bring flowers. So, yes, uh, I hope it will continue like that. And the only uh, now, not the only, <laughs> very important uh, decision for, for, for our European politicians is to see the power, the power of, of culture uh, and, uh, and uh, provide uh, finances for supporting it and for supporting our cooperation in the future. Thank okay. you. So then maybe we start with the questions from the audience and I will not read because thank you for writing the questions in the in the comment section. But if it's okay for you, I ask you to, to say your question yourself. So the first question was from Annika 
Moldström, Annika, are you still here? And do you want to um, say your question or your comment yourself? No, does the sound work? Yes, we hear you. you hear me? Okay, perfect. I'm new to this interface. I'm not, I haven't been using uh, Teams before. So, hi, thanks for, for an interesting conversation. I actually posted so many of my comments, so, so um, I'm trying to remember what I what I was uh, what I was uh, commenting on. But the first thing that I I, I would like to uh, view as an opportunity because uh, this uh, Corona crisis with a lot of things being closed down, of course, uh, feels like um, uh, um, a crisis in a way. But it's also an opportunity in a way because I find that a lot of culture has become very available for a larger audience than it used to be. And I'm thinking of both uh, ballets and operas and archives from libraries. And I found a French archive yesterday, uh, which are being released for free now during a, a, a trial time or, or, or Corona uh, quarantine time. So I'm thinking uh, if you have any ideas or comments on that, how some culture can actually be uh, reaching a wider audience uh, than it used to be because what well, used to be uh, have a, a price tag now actually is for free and you can have new target groups uh, discovering and also understanding to appreciate a, a type of culture or a genre that was not really that available before. Do you have any comments on that please? Thank you. Who wants to answer it? Uh, I can just add uh, the situation in Vienna, for example, the, the famous opera house uh, and some theaters, they, they stream their, their plays uh, online for free. And a lot of musicians post old concerts of them or some of them do uh, daily concerts of some minutes. So I can, yeah, yeah. so I think, some of the culture is now for free, what I can say in the situation here in Vienna. Mm. But yes, uh, can I continue? Yeah, please. Uh, I, think, I think that I agree that it's a beautiful transition that that uh, that uh, many culture organizations are going out of their venues and 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 uh, I mean going digital. Uh, but uh, I think and, and I, uh, the availability of culture is of course also. Uh, much bigger now than it was before, so that the audiences uh, can reach people who didn't have money before to go to the opera, can watch the opera. This is fantastic, but my point of view uh, is not the audience point of view, it's the culture sector's point of view. I think that uh, we are still uh, um, like sliding on the, on the grounds, which we, have, we still have at our institutions, like I mean, operas, culture houses of different kinds, so we can still produce culture and we can send it out. But the fight is not about uh, the digital transition or possibility to send culture and reach uh, more audiences. This is the future, of course, which is very interesting, interesting and exciting. The fight is for keeping the infrastructure of the cultural sector that is getting finances for uh, financing all those productions, because if the financing will quit, the productions will also quit. So, uh, independently of the audience out there, there will be no productions. And this is what is what matters now to get to get uh, to get this infrastructure to be stable even in the future, and not only now. Okay, some more comments on that. <coughs> hey, comment, Margaret. Your uh, question about uh, nationalism and regionalism in Europe. Yeah, if you if you want to, to answer yeah, because that. Because I think it is uh, we uh, we skip it uh, too early, and it's uh, fundamental also for understanding uh, the, the, the question raised. Um, the um, that is the center of the issue. Uh, uh, we have. Uh, to emphasize, to enhance differences. Uh, so the risk of nationalism is uh, directly proportional to the fake 
uh, a sense of uh, unity and indifferences inside the nations. If we enhance the differences locally, we will enhance also the only capability to take, uh, to keep all this complexity together, that is Europe. In Italy, we have, uh, we are, we, we are representing this problem because uh, uh, Sweden, uh, Poland, uh, France, first of all, and Germany, uh, Austria, uh, are nations. Uh, they have, you have a very strong sense of identity. We don't. You know, Garibaldi and Mazzini has done Italy. Garibaldi has done Italy and Mazzini was, was saying, now we have to do the Italians. Because, you know, Italy was a patchwork of uh, people from Piemonte and Sicily that, that invaded Sicily and so on. Italy, the only political and, and uh, urban uh, geographical structure is the one of the city state. So we are now the, for the first time facing, for the second time in its history, you know, after the wars, uh, facing this necessity to link together. But we think that we are, we are very ready to keep the individuality. And I don't know if it's the same in your countries, if you are able to announce the differences, the differences between the region inside your countries. Uh, because these uh, uh, differences will bridge to the other region. So we are now working in the huge differences of landscape, culture, heritage of the many cities and regions of Italy. And this will help us to better understand and fit the uh, global European uh, cultural strategy. But don't you think also, Francesco, that this time now, because also on some pictures from Italy, you see Italian flags on each balcony and there is a uh, but in my feeling and what I see here in Austria, and I, I don't like it, is that more and more people think now as a country, as Austrians, as Italians, as Swedes, we should have stayed together and not as Europeans. Uh, this is a possibility, but consider that the health, uh, the health management in Italy is regional. And can you see the two very close countries, Veneto and Lombardia, managed by the same parties with the same uh, with a very similar approach they've done different a different strategy a political approach but they have done a difficult a different um, uh, technical strategy and now veneto is exiting the the crisis and lombardia is still in so uh, we um, we don't have a unity of management conte the, the, our prime minister is really working for uh, for Italy and for the sense of unity of the, of the state, we are, we feel much more Italian than ever, but still we are physically, geographically, culturally different. And these different is, differences are our richness, us will be the richness of Europe. So I think that uh, the balance between uh, national and regionalism should be investigated by, uh, with our cultural project and is a potential. We have only to work in that direction because the, the, what we, happened in phase two, uh, as we are discussing now, is that the countries will be blocked. So the, uh, I, I don't know if you have the same, but uh, one uh, seems that uh, we will open our uh, frontiers from uh, flying all, all Europe in one year, in March. 2021. Till then, tourism will be on Italian. Uh, this is an, an healthy necessity, uh, like yours, most probably. So we, we we will not have the possibility to join us. So we will work in our differences. We will be ready to enhance the common sense of of uh, of, of Europe, but we will stay by, among ourselves. This I uh, think will be fruitful if we work like cultural institution like Ivona was saying we work closely but everyone with our European vision in our countries okay. yeah. so can I, can I add one thing Bernd? yeah please uh, 
I think that yes, you are right. Even uh, in Italy, there were expressions of uh, um, national uh, identity, but I think it's quite normal when you have a thread uh, now to to feel uh, uh, all together and, and unified. But uh, I think that uh, if we will get uh, out of this situation, it will be only. Uh, in a collaboration of uh, within Europe, and even maybe if Europe, the, the Europe that we have been uh, knowing so far, it would be different uh, after this uh, uh, corona virus crisis. Uh, probably the 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 tool that culture will have uh, it will be the. Um, uh, the connecting point, because I don't think that from the cultural point of view, we, we are going to lose anything. Uh, most of of the, um, uh, the others uh, in this panel have stressed that uh, we are, no, Magda was saying that we are uh, living more culture now and uh, on a more wider um, uh, way, and it's all European culture. So I really think that uh, culture will be one of the tools to keep and to design a new European uh, uh, community. Okay. Hey, Barnes, may I say something from please. Austin? Belgium. Yes, please, Martin. We know that Belgium was one of the founding fathers of Europe. We were um, one of the first to, to, to create Europe, in fact. And we are a very small country, so we rely on Europe. But what I see is that Europe was really very late in responding to this enormous crisis and they do not have the means to do something about health care. That's, that's for the nations, for the states. But um, I see this really big gap between the northern countries who think they are richer and they should keep their own uh, riches and then the southern countries who really rely on Europe and, and depend on Europe to, to be to, to create this solidarity and Europe was too late to to, gap, to, to bridge the gap and, and that's really really unfortunate and you have this immense um, yeah <coughs> not solidarity but the opposite of solidarity almost so and I think what Europe should do and is doing now is pumping huge amounts of money into economy of these nations to help them recover this huge pandemic uh, yeah, uh, disaster <laughs> economically and uh, culture will prove to be truly European and to gap all these bridges. But it will be from an economical point of view that Europe will resist, will still exist or will fail. And that's the whole point, because even if we are nation states, we'll always be Europeans. But we will not be European Union without the economic uh, union and without uh, solidarity on that point. And that frightens me a bit that this is almost lost. And I hope they can really get back on track because otherwise it will it will be a disaster for many states. But we, I would also like to remind that the United States of America are not so united now either. You see the same phenomenon. Every state is fighting for itself and they don't get enough support from the federal government and so on. So you have these reflexes in every country in every um, uh, state, I think it's it's perhaps it's an um, existential crisis also. And we have to be a bit compassionate and give it some time. And I'm sure that we will recover from this and we'll be stronger afterwards. I hope so. Okay, uh, Ivona, I said. Yes, I'm just thinking about because in this in this company here, in this debate, we don't we don't have uh, maybe that that much uh, uh, that much uh, political uh, discussions, but otherwise, uh, if you look at uh, what is going on in Europe con concerning the national nationalistic tendencies, uh, there are countries uh, which are uh, using the situation and closing uh, the, not the physical borders because they are uh, in many countries already closed, but uh, uh, closing the politics, closing the, the uh, or, or introducing measures uh, which uh, will not be possible to, to introduce without this crisis. Uh, so, so, and we everybody knows what countries they are. So, so uh, this is the threat that uh, 
uh, the closed borders, uh, which are closed because of the pa pandemic, will remain closed, and uh, that uh, on the other uh, on the other side of this of this situation of this crisis, we will not recognize Europe. Uh, that uh, the politics uh, will use the situation for closing the nations uh, even more, uh, and uh, and uh, we. We will not be able to change it. So I don't know how to approach the situation. I think that uh, European Commission is uh, working on that, of course, with different measures. But uh, still, it's everybody. Uh, everybody's attention is now turned inwards uh, towards the the health crisis. We can really um, find ourselves in a very different political landscape after this situation. Yeah, of course. So uh, maybe we we is we go on with the questions or statements from the audience. If there is no one more, no one wants to say something about this topic. Um, Monica Garcia from Spain, are you still here? Mm, yes. Good afternoon. Yes. Hello. hello. Yes. yes. Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you for this meeting. It was a pleasure to follow you. Uh, I only want to know uh, how do you think there could be some uh, concrete measures uh, in this emerging moment uh, to uh, hurry with this in order to uh, uh, found resources for people that are uh, in a very difficult situation from culture sectors. Hmm. So, who wants to answer that? Or who wants to? Uh, the question is if you are asking about the measures in Spain or in Europe. Uh, there is not much in Europe, and uh, the situation in Spain is really a crisis now. Uh, there are, however, uh, some measures introduced for um, well, small companies, which some of the cultural workers are. Um, they they have it. They it's registered, so this is possible to use. But it's unfortunately all on the national level, I would say. So how quickly? Well, in Sweden we already have both national and regional and municipal measures to be introduced, which is a pee, drop in the ocean. It's not much, and the debate is also very very um, uh, hot. Uh, about those measures, and and uh, nobody is actually speaking about about the European Union. There is, however, one organization which is working with freelancers in Europe, with, with uh, dealing uh, which is an ambitious uh, ambitious solidarity project, and it's actually also existing in Spain. So maybe you can ask there. It's uh, Smart Spain, uh, having its offices in the different different uh, cities like Madrid, Barcelona. So, and they have a, a, an international corona plan. So, if you are an artist, just ask. Yes, thank you very much. Not, um, I actually mean any group for any country, but in a different, in, in this difficult situation. Uh, I work in cultural cooperation in international organization, but nowadays it's very difficult to get uh, in this uh, urgent situation any way to to really um, get through this this uh, uh, tremendous moment. So uh, I think it's very important the cooperation between countries uh, and as you say the bridge uh, like intercult I think it's a very very important uh, institution to do that. Uh, from this uh, to these collectives of uh, vulnerable people and uh, national governments. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Can I add uh, something? Because please, 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 please. Because this is a very important uh, question, no? Uh, and you want to clearly, uh, as you, Ben, uh, were saying, that uh, the answer at the moment is national. And unfortunately, or fortunately, this is true. We have to take it as a matter of fact. Um, we, uh, Mediterranean country, uh, more hit by the virus uh, 
and more hit by the economic crisis uh, are having more problems than others. And I personally don't think that culture will be financing. Uh, will be for sure less financing than before, and there were already very few money. So, uh, what I suggest to you, and what are we trying to do, is to look, of course, abroad, trying to, you know, to work on these international networks, if possible, uh, but also to look around, so to, to try to focus on specific topics in uh, neighboring fields, where we may cooperate with institutions belonging to different fields. For example, we are working uh, for uh, the archive of the memory of the memories of uh, the people hit by the earthquake in the center of Italy. We, uh, because most of these people are, were having knowledges, and so most of these people were having little enterprises. So we are working with the association of uh, artisans and entrepreneurs. It is incredibly more active and, and, and rich. Uh, in then uh, all the cultural institutions we might deal with. Of course, they are in crisis because of the financial crisis following the coronavirus crisis, but they are, from my point of view, the only Trojan horse, the only breed. So we have to, what I was saying, we have to hybridate our strategies in the, in the next Days in the next step, uh, I think that this is possible. And we might say others. What are another thing we are doing is dealing with sustainable uh, uh, zero kilometers strategy. So, uh, of course, climate change is part of the cultural uh, landscape, but there are the producers of uh, electric uh, uh, engine. In Venice, we are dealing to do a, a regatta for uh, electric boats. And so we are edging other worlds. Many culture is acting with that. Uh, we are poor, but uh, this world is, you know, is, will be an engine of the rebirth of the Italian economy, and we hope to be there with them, uh, trying to, uh, um, to give a, con a cultural content to, to uh, force this mainstream, the many mainstreams, the, the funds we go to the artists and the funds that we go for the new uh, for the new technologies uh, towards cultural issues. Okay. So maybe the, take the next one from the from the audience. There was Marissa, but I think there was just an idea about the dolphins. The next um, longer comment was from T S B R. I don't know if the name is written correct. So are you still here? You said, I am. Thank you. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes, very clearly. Lovely. Um, yeah, so um, thank you for this discussion. I think it's a really um, inspiring one. And um, I agree with Magda. I think it is in itself a form of solidarity. So I'm really happy to be able to hear you. Also, so many different perspectives from so many different places. So thank you. Um, my question, I'll try to be brief, but my question was really just about public spaces and creative interventions within public spaces. So thinking um, maybe along the same lines as what uh, Francesco um was saying about linking back to communities and, and public spaces. So my sense is that cultural, like creative interventions or artist interventions in the public realm, they have the opportunity to become quite locally focused. What I wrote was hyper local in this time. Um, and that although we are, many of us are a, across you know, the world are confined to our homes, um, it is possible for a large percentage of the population to, to go for walks or to go out. Not everyone, but a lot of people, even if it's just once a day. And this creates an opportunity for artists and for cultural organizations to intervene in the public realm. So my question um, is what um, I would be really 
happy to hear what have the speakers themselves seen in their own neighborhoods? What kind of creative interventions have they considered commissioning in their own organizations? So I'm really interested in non-digital responses because I think that our cultural response right now um, is quite hyper-digital. Thank you. So who wants to start? Uh, well, we are not uh, commissioning uh, anything because we are not the producers in that uh, that sense. But uh, still, uh, I see that, uh, and it's really also seen uh, Tara in the digital space that uh, theaters, for example, are going out of the of the of the houses, uh, using the public space outside as a stage. Uh, so, for example, Unia Clara, which is uh, uh, a young uh, theater or, or theater for young public, they are having performances uh, on the grass uh, in one of the suburbs. But this is sent digitally still. Uh, so I guess that the audience is also around, uh, but they are mainly mainly sending this. So, so uh, the public space is used used as a stage. Uh, to be able to keep the distance uh, and still have a performance. That's one example. Okay, then we also, but maybe Markus, if he's here, can explain this better. We, we run the project, the Red Carpet for Young Artists, mm -hmm. which is an exhibition inside a um, metro station. And at the moment, mm -hmm. it's the only open exhibition in Vienna because it's yes, allowed maybe, maybe. to stay open. Please, Markus, explain. The showrooms, uh, we have a project in Vienna, it's called the Red Carpet Art Award. I will give you the link. And now we have the, the big luck uh, that we have uh, free rooms in the uh, underground stations. And now uh, the young artists have the possibility uh, to make uh, exhibitions uh, in these showrooms because these are the, the last places uh, where we can make uh, public exhibitions uh, now in this crisis and it's, it's a very interesting project and uh, I will send you the link uh, into the chat. So, are there any other answers yeah, to this Marta, question? That, uh, Marta. That, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Marta. Please, Marta and then Ivona. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanted to say that uh, of course, um, there is a possibility with the smaller <laughs> interventions, like uh, some artists would just use their balconies, you know, for, as a concert stage, and uh, that works. And uh, I know of the mur murals, are, I suppose, as well, uh, this kind of expression uh, of nowadays and uh, they, in Poland at least, and I, I suppose also in other countries, they are used to express the gratitude to, to health service to doctors, nurses. Uh, there is uh, at least one such mural in Warsaw that I know of, but probably there are more. And uh, we have been discussing in uh, Baltic Sea Culture Center uh, even today the possibility of organizing uh, some concerts in a, in a park on, or on the roof. So something, but of course we have to analyze uh, the, the how, how safe, safety measures uh, about for, for our audiences. But uh, we are thinking, definitely we're thinking about going uh, outdoors <laughs> with our art, not only to be, to remain in the digital space. Thank you. Uh, maybe I just want to say something. Uh, I don't, I'm not aware if something like this is happening in, in Venice uh, right now, but I don't think so because everything is uh, locked down and uh, you cannot, uh, uh, you are asked not to be outside, not even for, for, for a walk. Uh, on. So uh, I don't think any, nothing of this kind is happening. But the, uh, for, for sure is the challenge uh, for the reopening because uh, the big event as we were used to to have before they won't be there for a long time but uh, the um, your comments make me think about uh, the this uh, 
uh, underserved, di digitally underserved or disadvantaged communities, which is something that uh, in education uh, appears also, and uh, because uh, schools are closed since uh, um, February 23rd, and uh, everybody, uh, all different level of uh, of schools uh, are working online, and so. Uh, this gave the, um, the um, this shows also who are connected and who are not because uh, uh, there are many um, families that are even if like connection is spread and it's uh, quite common but there are very different level of uh, uh, technology in different families so I think that uh, uh, even uh, um, in in the in the case of education and school, this is uh, something that appears uh, uh, in this uh, uh, occasion. Thank you, uh, Ivona. Please. Yes, uh, again, thank you, Tara. It's a great idea to move outside the outside outdoors. Uh, in Sweden, uh, it's cold, still cold, so we are not uh, outdoors that much yet. Uh, during the summertime, the cultural life outside is, of course, flourishing, but uh, as uh, Marta said, the gatherings will not be allowed for uh, uh, a long time. Uh, so uh, the, the, the challenge is, uh, well, the plus is the artists still can create and, and uh, uh, produce and train outdoors, uh, possibly uh, not uh, using the, 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 the stages in, in, in indoors. But the challenge is that the, creating the connection with the audience still, because the, if the audience cannot be there, then how will we find the audience? Uh, is the digital the only way or do we have other ways? I mean, like Panda said, singing from the balcony is keeping the distance. Like Romeo and Juliet, yes, in, in <laughs> Verona. Uh, so this was possibly the first modern uh, crisis performance, but uh, or an example of that one. But this is a challenge. Uh, I find it uh, interesting. How do we create a, a connection to the audience? Yeah, but uh, with uh, the outdoor space as, uh, as a cultural space. I think also Tara's question uh, about public space and 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 ownership and and the use of public space is is really interesting. And I think there's something very interesting I notice happening um, in terms of who has ownership of the space. But I, I, just at my um, local area, there's a, a a cycle path which. Uh, I walk my dogs and have done for years, and it's always deserted. And suddenly, the high street is empty, and this cycle path is absolutely mobbed. And everybody's dodging in and out. There's cyclists, there's people walking dogs, there's young people trying to have a drink, there's lovers. There's um, old people out with their simmers walking. There's it's it's like and everybody is trying to keep distance and dodging. And the cyclists are ringing their bells, and they obviously feel they have ownership because it's a cycle path. And <laughs> just a really interesting debate about um, who owns the public space is suddenly uh, brought to brought to the fore. Okay, uh, Martin, you wrote something in the chat about an open air exhibition. Yes, um, for those who have been in Ostend, uh, you remember that we have these galleries near the seaside mm -hmm. and actually we bring the photographers and uh, young, uh, sometimes a contest of photographers. And so it's the only open air exhibition nowadays, which is in Ostend available to all the public and we can go for a stroll, for a walk. So lots of people will see it because you can't leave your own city. You have to stay in the city to in, in your neighborhood. But a lot of people can see it. It's the only exhibition right now. So we're, we're fond of it and we, yeah, a lot of people have seen it. So that's, that's nice. That's good. Mm -hmm. OK, I think this was the last person with a question. Or is there somebody else who wants to say something? Oh, I have a question. So then maybe we make a last round on the panel and 
we, we come back to a similar question and as at the moment our project is about change making and changes. Um, can the partners of, of iImprove, when we see each other next year or hopefully sooner, what will you think will be the biggest change of this situation when we see each other again? So who wants to start maybe? I think, if I may, yeah. I think we have to reorganize uh, the way how we, we, we produce culture and how we measure audience and, and success. I think it's no longer valuable that, uh, or valid that we measure our success in numbers. So, so many visitors for our exhibition, so many people came to the concert. That's no longer, that will no longer be the, 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 the criterion to, to measure uh, our um, success. So I think we have to to deal with it in another way. Do we have to have an opening for an exhibition with lots of people in one another? No, we should do it in another way and really connect people, but in smaller groups and and, and another way. For me, that's the biggest lesson out of this pandemia, to, to make culture in another way, to, co to connect to your audience in another way. And we're still struggling. We don't know how, but we will have to do it in another way. I'm quite sure of that. Okay, thank you, Ma Martin. So, Liz, what do you think will be the biggest change when this situation is over? I hope that it's artists and creatives taking centre stage and helping to create the new world beyond the coronavirus epidemic and that we are connected as a group um, and as networks and that we are helping to shape that dialogue. We have the tools, we have the, the ability to, to, to generate that new dialogue, to work on a, on a symbolic level, to work subliminally, to help people to see new futures and new possibilities. That's what artists and creative people have um, at their disposal and it's um, it's almost our responsibility to contribute that and shape the new world. <laughs> Thank you. So, and, and Marta and Francesco, now we, sh we should be in Venice in the next uh, few weeks. We should have been. Um, so when we see each other in Venice, what will you say? What was the big, biggest change on this situation? <laughs> um, I don't have an answer, actually. <laughs> I, I I hope we will be tra we will build trust again to to be together, but not among us in general. I mean, I um, I really hope that after this long time of uh, distances, uh, it, it won't be a distance uh, in uh, in other terms. So I think this is would be the challenge and the effort that we have to do and uh, because there will be a very big uh, will and desire to meet but I, I really hope we will feel comfortable after all this time in um, so I don't know I hope we, that we won't lose the trust that we have uh, and uh, that I have uh, personally uh, in um, by character, so I, I really, we are, we, that we are not going to be affected in this way. Thank you, and Francesco, are you with us? Or maybe I think there, he has some connection problems. So, Mark, so what do you? Sorry, ah, sorry, sorry. Francesco. Uh, I yes. am also sorry. I, uh, I was out of connection for five, six minutes. So I had not the possibility to reply to the gentle Madam uh, Bell, and maybe you might exchange. But I was interested too, so we might exchange our contacts, uh, and we might discuss about uh. the public spaces. Because of course, I've been me an architect. Um, uh, we are uh, I'm speaking about bridging. <laughs> I am trying also to bridge that we could tour to more urban uh, uh, um, urban urban design uh, uh, strategies uh, in the future um, can you hear me yes yeah. we hear you yes uh, uh, in the future uh, yeah it, it's an open the question mark is open uh, I am very confident because 
Uh, we uh, thanks also to the active participation to the common project uh, improved that we were speaking about. Venticultura um, uh, now uh, is a lot debating. We are spread uh, from in all Italy, uh, but uh, we are discussing a lot. There is a good uh, feeling among us. Uh, there are good energies and also good uh, tools. So we are uh, we want we want to take advantage of this isolation uh, to link each other to network among us and with the other institution and. So in this uh, long uh, work, uh, silent work, we may say, because it's individual, we cannot go on. Um, we hope uh, that you will see some results in, in the camera. Okay, thank you, Francesco. And Magda, what do you think mm -hmm. you will tell us when we see each other? Mm -hmm. I think that uh, now it's time uh, it's, uh, for dreamers, you know. Culture has been made by dreamers and dreamers have been very often looked down yeah. upon. <laughs> what is a dream? But now it's time to show the power of dreams and we have been trying to do that in our project Memory of Water where we collected uh, dreams of our in, um, in, in, inhabitants of Gdańsk about the future of shipyard area. But uh, so this is about uh, the, the dreams, about uh, our communities, about our countries, about Europe, the new new world. But also in I Improve project, we have focus on storytelling. So this is also uh, something that we should come up with uh, the new narrative, new narrative for the new world. So new dreams, new narratives. And this is something what we, uh, what culture can offer to 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 the world, to Europe, to our communities. Thank you. And as the last person for this question, Ivona is our as the head of River Cities. And what do you think is will be the, what, when I ask you in when we see each other again, what was the biggest change of this situation? What will you answer? Well, uh, uh, by the way, Tara is a member of the River Cities, uh, 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 of the member of the project of, the, of, of Memory of Water. Uh, so Tara is one is the, the Scottish artist working with that project. One of the one 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 of the closest collaborators in our community. Uh, so for sure, Francesco, you will get the the, the contact details. Uh, but otherwise, we were uh, just speaking with uh, some artists about the future, uh, and we realized that up till now we were traveling, we were visiting, we were meeting each other. And we can't uh, proceed now, apparently. Uh, so the links established with the communities, we as artists, as cultural uh, workers, were, um, were uh, yeah, we're doing with, we're, we're dealing with the links established will not be there probably. The communities, uh, uh, when we return, the communities uh, will not be the same. And we, as uh, people of culture, we will have to re rethink the situation, how we deal with the new communities, which are, which will be, um, in well, affected by the crisis, affected by the numbers of sick people, affected by the deaths. This will not be the same world which will be revisited by our our groups our our artists our projects our our cultural communities uh, the communities which we work with will, might not even exist uh, so the work of culture will definitely be different the work of us uh, will definitely be different so for now we can offer by our productions a relief uh, we can help to overcome the time of crisis but we must always also think about what we will meet in the new world and how to approach it. And this is a great challenge. This is really a big deal, uh, which uh, I think that not many people are realizing that this is the, the, the role of culture, not only the, to offer a better quality of life uh, for now, but even to bear everybody, the, the whole society of 
uh, your city, of your region, of your nation, of the Europe, to uh, bear it from the point where we were, from the memories to the future where it will be. Okay, and thank you, Ivona, for these nice words. Thank you all for participating. I think this was a very um, inspiring session now for us all. Thank you here. The, we had on the, the most, um, the highest time about 30 or 40 people and on Facebook uh, the same number. So really thank you for, for this discussion. And this discussion was hosted by Wiener Bildungsakademie and we have another uh, English discussion next week about the situation in Hungary, which is uh, a very special situation in Europe. So if you want, I post the link in the chat.